thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. I'm going to read our opening statement here from Psalm chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40. Psalm 4-0 I patiently waited, Lord, for you to hear my prayer. You listened and pulled me from a lonely pit full of mud and mire. You let me stand on a rock with my feet firm and you gave me a new song, a song of praise to you. Many will see this, and they will honor and trust you, the Lord God. You bless all of those who trust you, Lord, and refuse to worship idols or follow false gods. You, Lord God, have done many wonderful things. And you have planned marvelous things for us. No one is like you. I would never be able to tell all you have done. There's a school of philosophy. A philosophy. There's a school of thought called existentialism. And in this school, people talk about what it means to be a human, and they talk about <clears throat> being thrown into the world. And the classic expression is being thrown into the world like a dog without a bone. But we see here from this psalm that it is not that way. God is active in his creation. He is engaged fully. He is working in every dimension to bless the works of his hands. That is amazing. How is it that we can come to understand what a mighty and wonderful God we have? We thank God for this word. You know, our state, the psalm in this, Psalm 40 says that I was, I was in a pit full of mud and mire, and God lifted me out of it. That is a picture of the state of sinful misery that we were in before God found us and before God rescued us. Have, has anybody here ever been in quicksand? <coughs> Has anybody here ever been? Okay. Yeah, we've all hit rock bottom a time or two. Yeah. If you've ever hit, you know, you're in that position where you're in a pit and it's filled with, with mud and muck and filth and there's no way out and no matter how you try, you yourself cannot get out. And not only that, but there's this idea of being filthy, this idea of just being completely covered and engrossed in this thick mud and how uncomfortable that is. And that is a picture of the human state of sinful misery. But God listened and he heard our prayer and he lifted and pulled us out of the pit with a mighty mighty hand to save. If you look over in verse 12, you see what it's like to be in this sinful state of misery. The psalmist says, I have more troubles than I can count. My sins are all around me, and I can't find my way. My sins outnumber the hairs on my head, and I feel weak. Please show that you care and come to my rescue. Hurry 
and help me. What a good God. And now we have the privilege of gathering together today, here in this room, us, to worship this good God together. The one who loved us. The one who saw your situation and saw my situation and who acted. Friends, that's somebody worth worshiping. That is somebody worth giving <coughs> the highest honor and the greatest of praise to. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's praise this excellent, mighty, high and holy God. Let's pray. Lord God, honor to you. We lift you up, God. We exalt you in our hearts. We bless you with our lips and with our thoughts. For your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts higher than our thoughts. Human life is but a breath and it disappears like a shadow. Our struggles are senseless. We store up more and more without ever knowing who will get it all. Listen, Lord, to our prayer. Our eyes are flooded with tears as we pray to you. We are merely strangers visiting in your home. Stop being angry with us and let us smile again before we are overcome by your wrath. Lord, we pray this prayer of the sinner. We pray this prayer of the one who has no hope but to live and die in this pit of mire and clay and mud and filth of our own sin. Lord God, we thank you that you did not leave us to our fate but that you desired to save us and that you did it out of love. Thank you, God. Lord, I lift up each person here and I pray for them. I thank you for them. Lord, may our prayers go up to you to be answered in the, whatever way your divine wisdom and sovereignty sees fit. Lord, I lift up the prayer requests in each person's heart, the unspoken requests, the requests for healing in body, the requests for finances, the requests for the salvation of our loved ones, our sons and daughters, our nieces and nephews, our brothers and sisters. O oh Lord, Pour out your spirit in our land. Lord, you see the forces of darkness gathering. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Merciless people make plots against good people and they snarl like animals. But the Lord laughs and knows their time is coming soon. Lord, let us obey you and remain daily in your care so that what you have given us from your own hand remains ours forever. We will not be in trouble in bad times and we will have plenty when food is scarce for you are our provider. 
wicked people who remain in their sin are enemies of the Lord, and they will vanish like smoke when a field is caught on fire. Honor to you, God. Lord, please be with us this week. Help us to act and help our comings and goings in light of this public health situation. Help us to be a blessing. Help us to be a benefit. Help us to be gracious, Lord. Let our thoughts be, be pure and clean. Let our actions be wholesome and honorable. And let us be a light in your world so that you would pour out your spirit upon flesh in this land, Lord God. Lord, I lift up special heartaches, special prayer requests, the ones that hit so close to home that they're even hard to say. Lord, will you, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please answer from your high heavens. Deliver us from evil and keep us in your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The fear of